Hey students, let's talk a little bit of Renaissance today and try to make sense of this. Uh, as you read McKay, I know you're probably confused a lot about especially the Italian city-states in terms of their government and economic power. So let's try to make sense of everything that's going on at this time period. First, just a few basics that you should know about the Renaissance is that it is the first part of modern European history, and that's why our course starts at this time. Now, you can look at the dates 1300 to 1600, and those are arguable um, depending on how you look at it. Even though we're looking at 1450 as, you know, kind of the, the date of modern history, we know the Renaissance took place far before that uh, in Italy. So that's where we're going to really start our look at. Um, as you can see, it started in Italy around 1300. And the reason for it starting in Italy was several factors, but the main thing was the, the wealth that trade brought in and, and all the things that kind of came about because of that wealth in the Italian states. But there's some other factors that allowed for this to happen in Italy, which we'll go over uh, in just a second. The Renaissance is also going to spread to Northern Europe around 1450, which is really our focus of this class. Now, if I read this to you, it says, In England, the Renaissance did not begin until the 16th century and lasted to the very early 17th century. For example, Shakespeare. I know my screen kind of blocks up those words, so understand that it is going to travel. Um, if you keep in mind how the plague traveled from Italy and moved forward northern uh, route, if you keep that in mind, the same thing happened with um, the Renaissance ideas. So I think that tells us a lot about how things traveled in Europe uh, and you know how fast things travel um, if you can kind of get in the time period of if the information starts in Italy and ends up in England um, it takes several um, decades and hundreds of years in time uh, for it to actually follow that path now the term Renaissance is actually from an 1800s historian named Jacob Burkhardt who claimed that the Renaissance was in stark contrast to the Middle Ages. Now, he's not the first to have this idea, but he's the first one to really coin the term Renaissance. As we talked about with Petrarch, he even noticed that this was a definite change from the Middle Ages, in which you know he even referred to them as the Dark Ages. So we there's obviously, um, amongst the elite, that people are seeing a change in uh, lifestyle at this time. Now, the Renaissance culture was almost exclusively to the upper class. They're the ones that, uh, you know, had the time, the luxury, the wealth to experience the Renaissance. Most people were just, you know, in terms of your peasant and, you know, your working class, they're just trying to survive. They didn't understand a Renaissance. They weren't looking into purchasing art. They weren't looking uh, to find time or, you know, they didn't have things, you know, empty time that they're trying to fill themselves with, like learning how to read Latin, they were worried about things like, you know, where's our next meal coming from? Am I going to be able to feed my family uh, in the upcoming week? So this Renaissance only happened for the very elite, which will beg the question later, was the Renaissance really a thing? Um, when you consider how few it actually uh, impacted. The peasantry was largely illiterate, so there's no way that they can get into this humanist idea of getting back to the classic uh, writings of the ancient Greek and Romans. And then the working classes and small merchants were preoccupied with the concerns of daily life. As I mentioned, they were just trying to survive. They're trying to eat. They're trying to make sure that they have uh, a shelter. They have clothing and things like that. Um, they didn't have time for uh, any frivolous activities like reading poetry uh, or you know learning history. They were preoccupied with the, the now. Now let's talk a little bit about the Italian city-states. It's it's very important that you understand that Italy is not a country. They are made up of city-states. That's important because had they been a unified country, uh, history would have been much different. You can see the northern cities right here uh, with Venice, Genoa, and Milan. Um, they're going to basically gain most of their riches through the trade. Take a look at a map and you'll see the advantages they have in terms of trade. You know, location, location, location will tell you everything you need to know. Um, now, We'll get into a little bit how their government was made up. The signori or the despots, that's kind of like a one ruler, um, or in small, uh, or they have oligarchies where the power is in the hands of a few. That's going to be the case with uh, most of all the city states. Every now and then there's going to be a commenda who is basically a, 
there was a contract between the merchants and the merchant adventure. This was to show how they made their trade. Um, a lot of times this uh, commenda would um, get the material, bring it to Italy for some of the profit, and then those people in Italy would turn around and trade it, uh, sell it for a lot higher profit. So all this money is coming into Italy. They're making all of this money. Um, you have these people who are willing to risk their lives and trade because this is still very dangerous. Getting on a boat and going to a foreign land is very dangerous at this time, at any time. Uh, so those people came back. Italians were able to take that, sell it to other places, sell it within their cities, and make a lot of money. So there's going to be a lot of wealth to come into uh, these Italian city-states at this time. And you can kind of see Italy became more urban. It had more towns and cities with significant populations than anywhere else in Europe at this time. That helps. If you have a, uh, a strong city environment, you're going to have the ability to build business, okay? Um, and, and we'll see in several areas that it's just going to grow to enormous um, uh, popularity uh, to really help this renaissance get going in Italy. Now, if you take a look at this map, it's very important. Keep in mind this map, whether, you know, we're talking about Venice, why they're able to dominate trade, uh, Genoa right here, all right? Papal states, and you know, we'll be talking a lot about that. Know where Milan is, uh, the Kingdom of Naples. Just be aware of where these places are. It's always good as you read about an area to look at a map so you can kind of get a visual for that area. Now, the politics, um, guys, competition uh, was what kept Italy from unifying. Now you could argue, well, they probably wouldn't have become as wealthy as they were without that competition. You know, that competition is what really uh, provided them the opportunity to become extremely wealthy. Uh, when you look at the Medici's and their banking industry, they were very competitive, very uh, strong-willed people. But that same competitiveness kept them from coming together and saying, hey, if we unite, we could dominate Europe. So in fact, you have an early balance of power. Now what does that mean? Whenever you read about balance of power, it's basically uh, groups that might come together to keep another group from becoming too powerful. For example, if we see Venice becoming very powerful, Milan might you know, go down to the papal state and say, hey, we need to do something to take away this power from Venice. And that'll keep everything kind of balanced. You want the power balanced so that no one uh, city-state is able to dominate the others. This is going to be very popular uh, in the 1700s and 1800s where you know you have a country like France that's trying to dominate all of Europe and other countries come together and say hey that's not happening okay we're all gonna kind of be on the same playing field so that we're all protected we all have our own interests. Political disunity eventually led to the downfall of the city-states okay because they never came together, though, they never became a very powerful entity and weren't able to protect themselves from larger countries, um, France uh, being one of those. Um, but had they come together, they would have been almost too powerful for any other country in Europe to deal with when you you know, talk about the money that they had and the resources that they uh, had the availability to get. Um, Italy, had they come together in the 1400s, uh, our history would be much different. Uh, the condottieri, those were generals that basically had their own private armies that were hired by the city-states for military purposes. So even though they were strong in terms of the city-states, they couldn't take on a large national army um, from some of the central uh, European countries. Of course, here's Leonardo da Vinci's... Uh, sketch of a condottieri. Now, let's go over some of the major people in each area. When you think Florence, you got to know the Medici family, okay? Um, because they were able to make so much money um, through the banking industry, when you have that kind of money, you're going to dominate all aspects of life, especially the political power of it. And if you can read that, it, you know, he's going to, a lot, you know, Cosmo, kind of the, um, the father of this uh, family here, um, is going to ally with other powerful families in Florence and become the unofficial ruler of the Republic. I know 
his picture kind of covers up some of those. So the Medicis are the Medicis. Um, they're going to kind of control Florence, and it's going to be their banking industry that allows them to gain this power. But in terms of the Renaissance, another aspect that it's going to allow them to, because of all this wealth, they're going to be probably the greatest patron of the arts. Now, what that means as a patron is they are buying the art. If you're a patron, you are buying whatever somebody is selling. Uh, if you go to a basketball game and you buy a ticket, you are a patron. Um, so they're going to be, I mean, when you have that kind of money just laying around, but art also was a great way to show off how wealthy you were. Again, if you didn't have money, you didn't have art laying around. You didn't have, you know, the, this the extra cash laying around to buy art. You had to have financial or you had to have enormous wealth, uh, to have art. So this was one way besides, you know, the big houses, uh, and in our terms, fancy cars, instead of fancy cars, you had art just lining up the homes. Alright, so Forza family, uh, they were running Milan, uh, they were very harsh ruling, um, and there was some question as to whether they should rule or not, and you know, Flor Florence and Venice really questioned some of their power, and they actually went to war for a while uh, over that, but uh, the Peace of Lodi kind of created a relatively peace that kept the Sforza family in power. As far as Rome and the Papal States, the Pope served as the religious and political leaders, um, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about is how much uh, the Pope had to do with uh, political aspects of the world at this point. And we're going to see that moving forward for the next couple hundred years. Um, and that's something that we want to keep our eye on, uh, you know, as we cover different topics is kind of the Pope versus Kings and, and really the Pope in uh, the political arena. You have Venice and the Venetian Republic, which was probably the longest lasting Italian city states that were very wealthy uh, right there on the Adriatic Sea. Uh, so they had great access to trade. Finally, you have the Naples or the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. It's the only kingdom, meaning they're the only uh, city-state that was run by a king. Um, if you look in your book, it'll be known as the Kingdom of uh, Naples. They're also known as the Kingdom of the Two S Sicilies. Uh, and you can see they were controlled by France uh, between 1266 and 1240 or 1435 and then controlled by Spain after that. The biggest reason why there was a decline is because they never came together and there was some rivalry between the city states. It was actually Milan who was going to invite France in to help them invade Naples and Milan. Um, and once the French came in and were able to have uh, some success inside this Italian state, they're going to come back. Um, once a foreign invader gets in and has some success, they're not going to want to stop. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. And so because they never came up uh, together, because there was this rivalry between uh, the city-states, uh, they're going to fall. And that was the beginning of the foreign invasion uh, and, and basically the beginning of the end of any possibility for Italy becoming a powerful nation. Um, just a few side notes. Um, and you can read through this. Sa Savonarola, excuse my pronunciation, um, he's going to become the ruler. He actually predicted the French invasion, and so people looked at him as some sort of like prophet. Um, and he was put in charge in order to rid uh, Florence of the ills of society. They felt like the only reason that this took place was because of the ills of society. And so he was very harsh. Um, he had people that he sent in, uh, almost spies that said, you know, he, all they had to do was say that somebody was doing something they shouldn't have done. And they were, you know, executed right there on the spot. But um, when France uh, was finally removed from Italy in 1498, the uh, Medicis were put back into power and he was actually burned at the stake. Now, just finally, I'm not going to get into Machiavelli, but Italy became a battleground in a series of struggles between Spain and France, and that's eventually what's going to lead to the fall of uh, the Italian uh, city-states. So the basic thing that you need to get out of this is, yes, they became very powerful and wealthy during the Renaissance, but because of the competition between the city-states, they were never able to come together and really protect themselves from foreign invasion. And that was the end of Italy. Hope this helped.
and I will see you soon.